These videos are educational in nature and meant to help 21 and over adult smokers switch to a healthier alternative. Welcome back to the channel, folks. I am Matt. Hope you're all doing well. Today, we're gonna check out the Atlantis GT from Aspire. Now, <laughs> backstory, the original Atlantis was the first sub-ohm tank, followed closely after by the uh, Kanger sub-tank. But, you know, it's got, obviously, a long pedigree. I think the original one came out in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. And now, on the GT version here, they have partnered up with Typhon, or Typhoon, I forget how to pronounce their name, who has been a well-known high-end modder for years and years. If you remember, they did the Nautilus GT about three years ago, so very cool that they are now doing an Atlantis GT. 4ML mesh sub-ohm tank, let's go ahead and dive into it. So inside you will of course have a user manual. You'll then get your tank. A second tank section. Now this tank section feels like it's some type of PCTG or plastic. So, you know, be careful if you have a really heavy uh, tank cracker type of liquid, but the tank section that is pre-installed is glass. Then you get a second coil and a second airflow insert base and a huge old baggie of different sized O-rings. All right, so here we are. Now this is 25 millimeters in diameter at the very base. It is about 47 millimeter, millimeters tall from the base to the top of the included drip tip. And let's check out that tip if I can get it out. It looks like a 510, but it does not have O-rings on it. It's one of those, you know, uh, friction style fit drip tips. Now let's try a uh, regular 510 on this. All right, I found one regular 510 drip tip and it will fit. So if you uh, have a bunch of 510 drip tips, you can of course use your own. If you don't like this drip tip, it is fully compatible with 510s as you can see. And let's put this guy back on. And there's a look at that. A Delrin, you know, kind of contoured, shaped, uh, comfortable shape actually, mouthpiece. But again, you could use your own. Now, in order to fill this, it's a turn like so, pops up, and then you fill up right inside there. When you're done, you close it all the way. Perfect amount of tension on that. You can see you got a seal right there. Very well done. Now on the bottom there is your airflow, and you don't have a lot of airflow control. You can basically go two holes all the way open, one hole open, and then all the way closed. But there is a second airflow insert we will get into once uh, we break this thing apart. Now on the base there, it says Atlantis GT. Fixed gold-plated 510 pin on that thing. And to get to your coil head, you want to unscrew the base like so. And so there's that section. And uh, really quickly, if you did need to you know, replace your glass, once you screw that all the way like so, like you're gonna fill it, but then you keep unscrewing, you can unscrew your tank section like so, and that is how you would be able to pull your glass in and out. All the threading on this feels really good. And you can see on that uh, you know liquid window section, quite an interesting design, almost like a honeycomb type of look on that window. Pretty interesting looking for sure, very unique. And then you got a design around there on that ring. Definitely has a higher end look and feel to it and heavier than most mesh sub-ohm tanks. Okay, so your coil head is in the base here, and to get that out, you just pull it out like so, and you have these airflow insert bases, whatever you'd like to call them, that you can swap out. So this one is a 1.2 millimeter hole, so each hole is 1.2 millimeters, and you got multiple holes going around that. And let's push, push that down. And you are going to get a second base. Now, on the ones I got, they didn't put O-rings on them. So you're gonna have to do it yourself if you get a package like one that I got. But maybe on the final versions, they already have the O-rings on there. So for the sake of time, I already put some O-rings on my other one here, if I can grab it. And there we are, all right? And this one has 1.5 millimeter holes, so it's gonna give you more airflow if you use this base right here, all right? And the way to get your coils in and out is to just push them through the bottom like so. So you're gonna get a 0.3 ohm coil that's gonna be pre-installed with the 1.2 millimeter base, and that is a you know vertical mesh coil, smaller inner diameter hole inside there, made more for restricted direction 
direct lung hits. This thing's rated for 30 to 40 watts. And then the other coil you're gonna get is a 0.18 ohm, rated for 45 to 60 watts. And this does have a larger, you know, inner diameter. It's gonna give you more airflow. And I'm gonna use this one with the 1.5 millimeter base. I already have the 0.3 ohm installed in my other tank. So here we are with the 1.5 millimeter base. Not sure if you can see that right there. You just take your coil head, you push it up through the bottom like so. Then when holding on to your coil head, you just slide through until that thing fits down like so. And I'm gonna use some Forbidden Berry from the collection in three milligram. I am using six milligram in the 0.3 ohm coil, and I am going to now prime this coil up a bit. Then you wanna screw your base into the device, and now it's time to fill it. Now, on the big, you know, chubby Gorilla bottles, 100 ml, 120 ml, the tip will fit, but you gotta push it a little bit in like so, and then fill it up. So it would have been nice if the fill part was a little bit larger, but I haven't found any issues. You just have to jam your tip in a bit. But once it is all the way pushed in, I haven't had any issues with bubbles or, you know, it leaking out of the uh, fill port hole or anything like that. So once we're all the way done, you pull the tip out like so, and then close it up like so. And then you can see down here at the bottom that you can adjust your airflow. So right there, it's all the way open. Two holes are open. You got one hole open and then you got no holes open, all right? And you got one slot, two slot, three slot, and four slots. And here's a look at the black one I've been using. Also comes in a few other colors. And let's take this and we are going to screw it on the Gower 18. Remember, you have a 25 millimeter uh, diameter at the base and that fits on perfectly. And there we are. All right, guys, that is it for the up close. Let's go ahead, go up top, vape this and talk about it a little more. All right, here's the Atlantis GT from Aspire and Typhoon. It's been so long since I've said the name. Typhoon, Typhoon, I think it's Typhoon. Feel free to correct me in the comments though. Now this one has the 0.18 coil. I have noticed that this one tends to read a little bit high around 0.25, but I haven't had any issues with the performance or anything. You could always lock your resistance as well if you want to. I had the airflow all the way open, three milligram inside here, 55 watts. Let's have a vape. A nice restricted lung hit, medium to loose restricted lung hit, very flavorful. Not the quietest tank in the world, but it still feels smooth. The airflow feels smooth as you're sucking it in. And I'm still blowing some out. Now, let me swap over to the 0.3 ohm coil. And I have the 1.2 millimeter airflow base in this one. Let me make sure the airflow is all the way open. And I'm going to go to 40 watts. It's reading 0.33. This one has six milligram inside here. Airflow is all the way open. Here we go. Then you get more of a medium to tight restricted lung hit. Now, of course, you can close it down even more. Let's go to just one hole, here we go. Still a restricted lung hit. Let me close the airflow all the way down, all the way, just to see if there's any airflow. No. So you basically have two settings. So you have two holes or one hole to use, one hole to use, but you have two different bases. So theoretically you have four different airflows for each coil you're going to use. I like the airflow on this, but obviously it's not as customizable as some other tanks where you have a different style of airflow control. So, you know, we could count that as a con. Um, again, doesn't really bother me, but if you're someone that wants like full customizability, it might bother you. Now, as far as any other cons go, I do think they should have made the fill port hole a little bit larger. Like I said, it works, but you do have to jam your tip in a little bit uh, when you go to fill it up. Not a huge deal, but worth mentioning. So those are really the two cons, I think. You know, the fact that uh, the fill port hole could be a little bit bigger and you're, you know, a little bit limited when it comes to adjustable airflow. Going into pros, build quality quality on the tank is fantastic. It's what you would expect, a little bit heavier than, you know, most sub-ohm tanks out there. It is a 4 ml capacity, which with some sub-ohm tanks, I would say that's not enough. But with this one, it's a little bit lower wattage sub-ohm tank. So I think that that's fine. And, you know, if it was to have a larger uh, capacity, it would be bigger 
and probably uh, uglier, I would say. I like the size of this. I think it looks nice at this size. It's kind of short and uh, girthy, and I like it. So, you know, I'm fine with the 4 ml capacity. You do have replaceable 510 drip tip, so you can use your own 510 drip tip on this. Uh, besides the size of the fill port hole, I do like the way they did the fill method where you just twist up and you fill up inside there and then you twist down. Very nice design. And the flavor on both of these coils is fantastic. I have no issue you whatsoever with the performance of this tank. If you like a lower wattage, you know, tighter restricted lung hit, then I would say go with the 0.3 ohm at six milligram. It's perfect, I think. And then uh, if you want more airflow, more of a medium to loose restricted lung hit, you could use the 0.18 ohm. Very comfortable mouthpiece as well. I like them both. I could use both of these. I think that, uh, you know, like let's say you have a single battery mod, then the 0.3 ohm would probably be better for that. You know, smaller single battery mod, you're using less wattage, you're gonna go through battery a little bit slower. But if you want more airflow, more power, then you got the 0.18 ohm here. And let's put that one on. And I think this one's good with three milligram e-liquid, like I said. And let me go back up to 55 watts, which is where I like it. But it is rated for up to 60 watts. I get enough warmth at 55 though. Very, very good. So performance is fantastic. Build quality on this thing is fantastic. Flavor is great. Again, you're a little bit limited with airflow and the fill port hole could be a little bit larger, but none of those are deal breakers for me. Definitely a tank I'm going to continue to use. I like the way it looks, especially on like a mod like this. It's just a nice looking combo for sure, in my opinion. And I love the way it performs and the flavor. So all in all, very nice job, Aspire and Typhoon. I hope this review was helpful to all you viewers out there. That about wraps it up. Until next time, thanks for watching.